kind of person that likes to be completely surprised on Christmas morning. I mean, there was a time in my life, and it, it, wasn't, it didn't make me any better or any worse now, but uh, I like to know exactly what I was going to get. In fact, I, I like to be able to kind of dictate what I was going to get, and, and I understand that because there was a time in my life where uh, special things, if I, were, if I was going to get them, I needed to get them at Christmas, and so I would, uh, I would use that opportunity to, to make sure that I had a list and my family knew what it was, and they were always gracious enough to, to select a present for me off of that uh, list. Uh, now I just drive them up the wall because I refuse to give them any, any, uh, any hints. Other than like they, Jay Leno will say, well, just tell us, give us a hint. All right, I like a week paid vacation at the, bo- uh, the Yacht and Beach Club at Walt Disney World. Uh, get real. Why don't you give us something that, like you would really want? Well, anything else you give me is going to be just fine. And so I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to get tomorrow. I'm going to be completely thrilled with every one of the gifts that my kids and grandkids uh, give me. And uh, that's just the way, that, uh, the way that I like it. Last night, Jaylen and I exchanged our gifts. Today's a busy day. Tomorrow will be a very busy day. So we watched a Christmas movie last night and exchanged uh, our Christmas gifts. And I never tell her what I, what I want. That's just the way, that, uh, the way that it is until the day I die, I guess. And she always seems to choose not only something that I really end up enjoying, uh, but something that I didn't even realize that I, that I needed. Uh, she got me, uh, last night she gave me an Echo with a screen on it. Uh, maybe I had an Echo Dot, and you know what the, those are. Alexa, play this song. Alexa, what's the temperature? Well, this one's got a screen on it. It's going to do all kinds of things. I, I don't know how in the world I'm, I miss that, but at some point in the last 15 years, they've come out with those. And so she knows exactly what to get me. I w- it's always just very appropriate and very wonderful. My kids, grandkids do the very same thing. You know, sometimes uh, we don't even know that the gift that we're being given is something that we really, really need and can be very useful to us. I think that's the way it must have been to the shepherds. I don't think the shepherds could have imagined that the gift of a child would have the kind of worldwide ramifications and eternal ramifications that it did. Uh, These shepherds that Craig read to us about just a few minutes ago, they were like most Jewish people. They wanted a Messiah to come. Uh, They thought when the Messiah would appear, he would be a a full-grown man, that he would be a, a military leader, that he would be something of a political figure, that he would help them throw off the the yoke of Roman domination, uh, that once again the Jewish people could be a could be a free people. Uh, establish a kingdom with its capital in Jerusalem. That's what they thought they needed. That's what they wanted. Uh, But that's not what they got. Uh, This is exactly what uh, Craig read just a few minutes ago from Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Uh, The shepherds sitting around a campfire, uh, probably a, a cool Judean evening, absolutely unprepared for the sky to be illuminated with the glory of God in a choir of angels. And one of those angelic beings said, today in the town of David, uh, the little, little village of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Uh, well, they were waiting for a Messiah They weren't anticipating that Messiah would be a Savior. A Savior that would set them free, not from the yoke of Roman domination, but freedom from slavery to sin and to death. Many months prior to this, the angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph. You'll remember the story. Joseph was having a a difficult time marrying Mary. She was pregnant with child before their marriage had been appropriately consummated. And Joseph was considering how he was going to divorce her because he believed her to be unfaithful, just like everybody else believed that she had been unfaithful. 
And an angel appeared to Joseph and said, she will give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. His name and his mission, they were intricately related. You know, the name Jesus means Yahweh saves. It means God saves. The very name of Jesus articulated and defined his mission. And if Joseph missed the idea that the name Jesus means God saves, the angel went on to say, because he will save his people from their sin. What the Jewish people needed is the same thing that we need, and that is a savior. And not a political figure or a military conqueror. We need a savior, and that's exactly what God gave us in Jesus Christ. The most famous verse in all the Bible is probably John 3:16, for God so loved the world. Almost all of us can recite that verse from memory. John 3, 17, not many of us have memorized. John chapter 3, verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Christmas is a yearly reminder. Now, it comes at other times and in, in other ways, but, but for the Christian church, for you and for me, it is a, a very pointed and focused season to remind us we needed a Savior. And the only way that God could save us was by sending His beloved Son to bear the punishment for our sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Many of us know that verse. It teaches us that we're sinners by birth and sinners by choice. The reason that we sin is because we're born sinners. So we're, we're, we're sinners in a twofold way, by birth and by, by choice. And there's absolutely nothing we can do to make that right. We can live our entire lives, maybe in a way comparable to Mother Teresa. Uh, someone who lived sacrificially and, and generously and, and, and lived their entire life in service to a, a deprived and depreciated people in a, on another continent. Uh, we could live our lives with, with pristine splendor, crossing every T and, and dotting every I, but it would never make us right with God. There's absolutely nothing we could ever do, no matter how hard we tried, no matter how hard we worked, no matter how good we were, that could make us right with God. We needed a Savior. We needed a Jesus whose name means Yahweh saves. We needed someone that would be willing to bear our sin in their body on the tree. We needed someone that would bear God's wrath in our place. He would suffer for our sin. Uh, but he had to be someone who had never sinned. He had to be someone who was not born in sin, who was not a sinner by birth nor a sinner by choice. He needed to be perfectly righteous, and he needed to live a perfectly righteous life. There's only one person, you know that. There's only one person in the history of mankind that has ever lived that way, and it was Jesus Christ, born in the little village of Bethlehem, not born in a palace with a silver spoon in his mouth, not having his birth announced to kings and princes, or even to the religious elite in, in Jerusalem, not to the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the high priest. Not to the Caesars or the Neros. No, none of those people had the birth of Jesus announced to them on the night he was born, simply lowly shepherds. Shepherds setting out in a field on a cold evening, probably gathered around the fire, uh, maybe telling uh, stories of the day. 
And to those lowly shepherds, those outcasts, people really literate, living on the fringes of society. Maybe people like you and me that uh, were born on the other side of the tracks. Who maybe didn't have all of the opportunities maybe that other people have. Uh, these shepherds had that night sky illuminated. And it was announced to them that a Savior had been born for them. For each one of them. And as the story goes on, it describes how the shepherds, they didn't make a blind leap of faith. They investigated what the angels told them. They didn't just simply uh, believe it. They went and examined it for themselves. They made the little trek to Bethlehem. Probably not very many babies born in Bethlehem that night. Likely wasn't very hard to track down Mary and Joseph and the newborn child. And they found for themselves that exactly what the angel had told them was true. The baby was wrapped in swaddling claws and lying in a manger. And they returned back to their place of business, their place of work, back to the fields, back to the campfire, back to the sheep, glorifying and praising God and sharing all that they had discovered. And they didn't go away to a monastery. They didn't go away and live in isolation. They didn't go away and separate themselves from the rest of the world. They went back to their world. They went back to their place of living. They went back to their sheep uh, with the message of the gospel of grace. You know, the, the most wonderful thing maybe we could do as believers tonight or maybe sometime tomorrow, it's going to be a busy evening for many of us and just a very full day for some of us tomorrow. And for others, it'll be a very lonely day, just to be quite frank about it. In the midst of our loneliness or our busyness, if we know Jesus Christ, it might be good just to slip aside for a brief period of time. It might just be 5, 10, 15 minutes tomorrow. And just thank God the Father that he loved us so much that he would send his son to die for our sin. And that he would forgive us of all of our sin. And he would give us a code of righteousness. You know, you're clothed in a righteousness that's not your own. And so am I if I know Christ Jesus. It's a coat we couldn't earn and it's a coat we couldn't buy. But it's a coat that's given us a gift nonetheless. And maybe in that five or ten minutes, we can just reorient our lives to the thing that really matters most in life, and that is the person and work of Jesus Christ. You may say, Pastor, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not a Christian. Listen, I can, I can understand that. I can relate to that. I wasn't saved until I was 19 years of age. I wasn't raised in a Christian home, and most of you know that about me. But in case you, you don't, I hear you. But I want to tell you that if you'll take some time and think about the offer of what God is extending to you, that Christ Jesus will be your Savior and Lord. You say, Pastor, what do I need to do? How do I sign up? Is there something I need to give? In fact, there's not only nothing that you need to give, there's nothing that you can give. You can only receive. Salvation is a gift that comes by grace through faith. Tomorrow, we'll give our kids and our grandchildren gifts for Christmas. Uh, they haven't had to earn those. They're going to be receiving them out of, out of love. They, they, they are going to be handed to them and they will receive them. That's how we receive the gift of salvation. We put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We believe that he is who the Bible says that he is. Who does the Bible say that he is? The Bible says he's the Savior. The Bible says that he died for our sin. He was raised from, God, from, uh, from the dead and he sits at God's right hand. And if you will put your faith in him, he'll make you a new person. 
He'll forgive you of all your sins. You say, Pastor, you don't know the sins I've committed. I don't have to know the sins you've committed. I know that the Apostle Paul said he was the chief of sinners. I know the sins that I had committed. There's no sin that you've ever committed that God won't forgive you for. There's no sin that you've ever committed that God is not willing to cover with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you will call out to him and you will pray a prayer something like this, Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe Jesus Christ is the only Savior that you've ever offered. I believe in him. I trust in him. I receive him into my life. The Bible says that as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So if you believe in him, you receive him. If you receive him, he receives you. And he will make you a brand new person. That would be the most wonderful, beautiful exchange you will ever have in any Christmas you'll ever experience. I'm going to ask you if you'll, if you'll pray with me. And after I pray, Pastor Craig is going to come and and we're going to sing Silent Night together. Hopefully, uh, someone of maturity has the, has the lighter. And uh, we're going to light these candles, and then the, the lights will begin to, to dim. And you'll be amazed at how, how much this room can be illuminated by these small candles. So would you stand and let me lead us in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege that we have to gather together and to worship your Son, who is our Savior. And we pray in Jesus' name that he would be the light that lights up our lives and that he would use us to light this world for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen.